Oh, Periscope. And there's Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Prophet David Taylor here. Um, had to take a little break uh, last weekend because uh, I have a lot of stuff going on. I had to take a little break, but I'm good. And uh, we're back for this week's live prophetic word. So let's say a word of prayer and dive right in. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for being able to come into your presence by faith and to receive from you, O oh God. So right now, God, I surrender. I ask you to breathe through me, live through me, speak through me, fill me with the Holy Ghost, God. Fill my, my mind, my brain, my tongue, my lips, my teeth, my hands, every part of me, O oh God, so you can breathe through me and release the word that you would have released into your people. <clears throat> I thank you for it, and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Amen. <clears throat> Rose and the Sword Ministry, amen. God bless you. So, today's prophetic word is entitled, Believe the Blessing. One more time. Today's prophetic word is entitled, Believe the Blessing. Now, we're going to be coming out of 2 Kings chapter 7. Okay? 2 Kings is in the Old Testament. We're going to be coming out of 2 Kings chapter 7. Okay? Now, I'm going to have to read all the verses for you to get the idea, and then we're going to focus in, and we're going to hear what the Holy Spirit has to, di has to, has to say Excuse me, for us today, okay? Now, let me just say this before I jump in. You always have to remember to please like and share when you come on, because whenever God releases a prophetic word, that needs to go around the world. So if you're coming on, thank, uh, thank you to all of you that are coming on live, but please like and share this video to as many places as you can. So again, when the Spirit of God releases a prophetic word, people are going to be blessed by it. People need to be edified by it, so it needs to go out as to, into as many spaces as it can, okay? So 2 Kings chapter 7, I will also say that whenever you're reading the Word of God, always remember that when you study the Word of God, you always have to talk to the one that wrote the Word of God and ask God to help you understand not only what he said in that context in the Bible times, but also how to apply it to your life. I'm going to talk a little bit about that more later at the end of the broadcast, okay? 2 Kings chapter 7. Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time, a seah of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seahs of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. I'm going to read that to you right quick out of the New Living Translation. Elisha replied, Listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. By this time tomorrow in the markets of Samaria, six quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver and 12 quarts of barley grain will cost only one piece of silver. Okay, just so you understand a little bit better what that's talking about. So an officer, verse 2, so an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And he said, Elisha said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Okay? Now, in the next verses, verses 3 through, 15, uh, 3 through 16, uh, well, 3 through 15, I'll sum them up for you. There was a group of lepers. There were four leprous men in at their in, that were at the entrance of the gate. And they said, why are we sitting here until we die? Let's go over to the camp of the Syrians. If we stay here, we're going to die because there's no food. If we go over to the Syrians, uh, to our enemies, they can only kill us. So basically they said, we're going to die either way. So let's go see if there's anything over in the camp of Syrians that's worth uh, investigating. Long story short, they went over there and they found out that the Syrians had left, but they left all of their spoils, all of their clothes, all of their uh, jewels. They left their spoils because the Lord had caused a noise to come into the ears of the Syrians, okay? So they started eating, and they started taking clothes, and they started taking gold, and then they said, this isn't good. <laughs> this is a day of blessing, because they knew, as Hebrews, that if, we're, if ever God gives you a victory like that, you're not supposed to keep it to yourself. you got to tell your leadership. They knew they couldn't just go in the Syrians' camp and take all that stuff out for themselves, because they knew something bad would happen to them if they did that, because you're supposed to tell the leadership when you're a Hebrew. And so they went and told the leadership, and I'll pick up the story right there. 
Uh, verse 14, Therefore they took two chariots with horses, and the king sent them in the direction of the Syrian army, saying, Go and see. And they went after them to the Jordan, and indeed all the road was full of garments and weapons, which the Syrians had thrown away in their haste. So the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians, so a sea of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two seahs of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the officer on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. But the people trampled him in the gate, and he died, just as the man of God had said, who spoke when the king came down to him. So it happened just as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two seahs of barley for a shekel, and a sea of fine flour for a shekel shall be sold tomorrow, about this time, in the gate of Samaria. Then that officer had answered the man of God and said, Now look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he had said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. And now remember, when you hear that word, see it, that's a, a kind of a, a old, to, old school, Old Testament measure. What it says in our terms, by this time tomorrow in the markets of Samaria, six quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver. And 12 quarts of barley grain will cost only one piece of silver. That's what they actually said, okay? So today's prophetic word is believe the blessing. Believe the blessing. Today's prophetic word is Believe the blessing. So we're going to glean what it is that God is trying to say to us based on these scriptures right here. First of all, the first thing that you need to understand from this passage of scripture is that God can turn your situation around like that. Okay? God can turn your situation around. Okay? It doesn't take the Lord no whole long time, even if you've been waiting a long time or tearing a long time or believing in a long time. When the answer comes, God can turn it around like that. <clears throat> and so Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time. So God said, in 24 hours or so, we're going to have uh, several quarts of fine flour that's only going to cost you one piece of silver. And God said, you're going to have 12 quarts of barley that's only going to cost you one piece of silver in the Sumerian gate. So it would be like if you went to Jewel or if you went to Walmart and they had, uh, they had loaves of bread on sale for a quarter like that. Okay, that's what Elisha said. No matter what was going on in the economy at the time, because they were at war, Elisha said about this time tomorrow, they're going to be selling bread at Jewel and Walmart for a quarter per loaf. Then this dude, this officer, uh, who was uh, one of the support staff of the king said, he said to Elisha, look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? Oh, Lord have mercy. Then Elisha said, and he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Okay, you need to understand what just happened. And my pastor talked about this this morning too, and it's right on time. Whenever a word comes forth, from the man or the woman of God, you better receive it. Okay? Now, uh, we had a guest in church today, and he was talking about there's some people out there that's kind of flaky in the prophetic. He was right, too. He was actually a publisher. So how do you know the difference? The difference is when you have proven, trusted apostles and prophets who've given prophetic words over and over and over again, and they're accurate every time, and they come to pass every time. When a man or a woman of God that's been proven and that's trusted releases the word of the Lord, you better receive it. You don't mock it. You don't make fun of it. But what this man did was basically the same thing they did on the Titanic. I don't know how much you know about the real Titanic, not the movie. The real Titanic, when they built that ship, somebody said God himself couldn't sink this ship. Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, they really said that. And what happened to the Titanic? Sure enough, sank, didn't it? Because you don't call God out like that. Oh, man. You don't call, you don't put God on blast like that. You don't, you don't front God off like the Lord can't do what he said he could do. You don't talk to God like that. You don't talk about God like that. You don't talk to God like that. And you don't rebuke the man or the woman of God 
if they've got a prophetic word. Just because it seems impossible and too hard for you doesn't mean the Lord can't do it. So remember what I say all the time. Our job is to HBO. Our job is to hear the word of the Lord, believe the word of the Lord, and obey the word of the Lord. That's our job as people. It never gets any more complicated than that. If you want to know what you're supposed to do as a Christian, it's HBO. Hear the word of the Lord, believe the word of the Lord in your heart, and obey it. That's your job. It's never going to get any more complicated than that. But when you front off the man of God like that, when you disrespect the man of God, when you disrespect the prophetic word of God Almighty, it is not going to go well for you. And what Elisha said was, he said, in fact, you're going to see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Now, that is kind of a common judgment with God. If you tell the Lord he can't do something or you rebuke the Lord or you don't believe God, God will let you live long enough to see that thing come to pass, but you're not going to partake in it. That's what happened to King Saul. That's what happened to Moses. That's what happened to this man. That's what happened to Judas. Judas saw the kingdom of God. He saw Jesus, but he betrayed him. So he didn't get to participate in everything that happened after the resurrection. Okay, so the man of God says, says you're going to see this but you're not going to eat of it. So how does that translate to us today? Okay, the way that translates to us today is that God can turn your situation around in a moment of time. You can have a completely different life by this time tomorrow. What time is it? It's about 2.42 Central Standard Time in Chicago. By 2.42 on Monday tomorrow, your entire life could be different. And if God says that's what's going to happen, then that's what's going to happen. OK, but what you don't do is rebuke the man or the woman of God. What you don't do. Hello, everybody that's coming on now. Please like and share this video. If you come on, please share it because the word of the Lord needs to go to as many people as possible. But what you don't do is rebuke the man of God or rebuke the Lord. You don't front God off talking about what God can do. So today, the, uh, the name of today's prophetic word is believe the blessing. <clears throat> this morning, our pastor released a prophetic word that I received about rush, rushing in about prosperity can also be translated rush, where God will send a great swell of blessings your way. And I received that. So if God is, yeah, okay, and the Holy Ghost is telling me that now. The Holy Ghost is telling me, this is true for some of y'all listening to me. By this time tomorrow, your whole life's going to be different. And the Spirit of God wants you to know that it's your job to believe the blessing. Believe that God can turn your situation around in less than 24 hours because he's able. I don't care how long you've waited up to this point. I don't care how many mistakes you've made to this point, And I don't care how many people you've seen go through whatever. If the Lord says to you, by this time tomorrow, your whole life's going to be different. By this time tomorrow, you're going to have so much money, you can pay for three, four houses cash. If God said that's going to happen, it's going to happen. And it's your job to HBO, hear it, believe it, and obey. Okay? <clears throat> so what happens in the middle of the story <clears throat> is that there were lepers. Now, if you don't know anything about lepers in the Old Testament, if you had a, the skin condition of leprosy, you had to stay away from the main camp of uh, Israel so you wouldn't infect the people that were clean. And if you had leprosy, you had to walk around and cry, unclean, unclean, to let people know that you were a leper. And so basically, you lived on the outskirts of any place where the main camp of Israel was. So these lepers were at the entrance on the outskirts of the gate, and they knew they were going to die because there was no cure unless you got a miracle. If you got a miracle cure for leprosy, you could cure it. But barring a miracle, you were just going to basically, it was going to eat away your skin and your organs till you died. So the lepers said, why are we sitting here till we die? Let's go over there and see what's going on with the Syrians. Maybe we can get something because all they can do is kill us because we're going to die anyway. And they found that the Lord had run the Syrians off and the Syrians had dropped all of their spoil. That's just unbelievable. That's just, that's just, uh, you know, uh, it's just mind blowing that God could take the sound of worship. God could put the sound of a chariot in the ear of your enemies and make them so scared. They just dropped everything. They just dropped everything and ran. They dropped everything and ran. They dropped everything and ran. So after the lepers had gotten their full, 
their field, they realize that, you know, we got to tell the king because we can't have all this spoils and we're taking it all for ourselves because as Hebrews, they knew better than that, okay? And so then what ended up happening was after the king uh, sent the chariots, they found out after they went and plundered the tents, the same thing happened that Elisha said would happen, that they got bread for like a quarter or like one shekel and they got 12 quarts of barley for one piece of silver. It happened just like Elisha said it was happening. There was so much stuff that the Syrians had left that the food and the clothes were cheap. Just like Elisha said would happen. And so the man that laughed at Elisha, the man that said, if God opened the windows of heaven, could he make that happen? What happened was <clears throat> when all the people were going to the gate to get all this uh, food and clothes, he got trampled. So he saw all that spoil. He saw all the prosperity. He saw the people to come to get it. But as the people came to get it, they trampled him and he died. Okay? So it happened just as Elisha said. The food got really cheap in less than a day. Plus they had all the clothes, plus all the gold and the silver. And the man that said that God opened the windows in heaven, could that happen? He saw it, but he died before he got a chance to eat of it. So how that translates to us today is you have to believe that if the Lord tells you he's going to turn your life around in 24 hours, it's going to happen exactly the way God said it's going to happen. And that's true for some of you listening to me now. By this time tomorrow, your whole life's going to be different. And it's going to happen so fast, your, your brain's going to explode. God's going to turn your whole situation around. Let's get into more detail. For example, what if you could get out of debt in a day? What if you've got enough money to get out of debt in a day? What if you reconciled a relationship? What if you've been praying about something for 10 years? You broke fellowship with maybe somebody in your family, and you've been praying about it for 10 years, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they come back, and their heart is fixed, and they're full of forgiveness, and y'all want to be in fellowship again. What if you've been praying about meeting someone to spend your life with, and all of a sudden, you meet somebody, and you know that they're the one? What if you've been praying about a door to open, and you've been trying to get something off the ground, and all of a sudden, somebody comes in your life, and all of a sudden, they open up a whole new world to you like that. See, your job is to believe the blessing. And what does that mean? That means that if you really believe in your heart such a thing can happen, you'll, number one, start to confess it. You have to say it. I tell you that every week. That when God gives you a prophetic word and God said, I'm doing this in your life, you got to say it. Okay? You can't stay silent. You got to confess you got to worship God like it's already happened, but then you have to put some works behind your faith. So in other words, you have to put yourself in a position to receive that thing. And that's where a lot of Christians end up missing their blessing because you don't really believe it. Whatever it is that you believe in God for, like a new job or a new living space or reconciliation or healing, you got to put yourself in a position to receive that blessing. A lot of y'all have doctor's appointments tomorrow. And you say, if I'm healed, why do I have to go? Because if you go, the doctor will give you the report that says, we can't find nothing wrong with you. And you're going to find yourself shouting the victory in the doctor's office. Because it's going to be a testimony, not just to you, but to the other people in the office. That whatever it was they said you had, you came in for another test and they can't find no trace of it. It's gone like that. You see that? If that's what God says he's going to do for you, you've got to believe that, you've got to confess it, and you have to obey. You've got to put some works behind your faith. Put yourself in a position. A lot of people that have prayed to God for money haven't put any works behind their faith. You haven't grown up here, okay? If you make $30,000 a year, and then wrong with making $30,000 a year, and God tells you this time tomorrow, I'm going to give you $3 million, if you haven't grown up here to know what to do with that level of money, you're going to take that $3 million and bring it back down to 30000 I guarantee you. That's what happens to lottery winners all the time. And do you know why? Because you didn't really believe that God was going to elevate you. So you didn't work on the way you think about money, learning how money is generated, how money is managed, how it's invested, the tax system, all the different things. Because there's a lot to learn with managing money. 
Okay, and that's why a lot of people, if you get a windfall of money, that's why a lot of people can't keep it because you didn't put any works behind your faith. You didn't get ready. Bishop Jake says that all the time. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Why do you think he says that? He's not saying that just for nothing. You got to get ready for the blessing of God. I know that's true about relationships because I know quite a few people who have talked about how they wanted to get in a relationship and they want to get married, they want to do this, but they're not acting like somebody that wants to get in a relationship. You know, you need to dress good. You need to smell good. You need to have worked on your issues because don't nobody want to be with a crazy person that's full of drama. You can mask that if you want to. You can put on some nice clothes if you want to. But if you haven't worked on your inner self, it's going to come out. It's going to jump out your mouth. <laughs> and everybody's going to be like, oh, well, okay, see ya. Because you didn't believe God was going to send you somebody. So you stayed bitter or you stayed angry or you stayed focused on your past. You stayed someplace you shouldn't have stayed on the inside because you didn't really believe that God was going to send somebody. Because I stop by to tell you, if somebody new comes in your life, they don't want to hear about all what you've been through. And they don't want all your anger and your venom and all your, they don't want to hear that. Just trust me on that one. <laughs> if you're going to meet somebody new, they would like to meet a whole you. They would like to meet a healthy you. They would like to meet a happy you. And if you've been abused or you've been through anything, it's going to take you some time to get ready for your next relationship. So if God told you like three years ago, <coughs> he was going to send you a spouse. What God wanted you to do was spend the next three years healing and get your emotions healed so you can live again, so you can laugh again, so you can love again. And that's how a whole lot of people end up missing that blessing because when spouse season comes around, they weren't ready. That happened in 2015. 2015, the summer of 2015 was spouse season. And I know some people that got uh, together and some people that got married that year. I don't know when spouse season is going to come again, but I know the summer of 2015 was spouse season. And I know there's some people that missed, they not only missed a spouse, some people missed their destiny because God was also looking for, for women to uh, give, uh, give the next generation of apostles and prophets to. The next generation of apostles and prophets are going to come to power around 2035. That's 20 years from 2015. So if God gives you a baby in 2015, he wanted you to spend the next 20 years getting that baby ready to be the next generation of apostles and prophets around 2035. And I know for a fact that a lot of people miss that. And when God is showing up with blessings like that, you have to be ready. I want you to think about the fact that Mary, the mother of Jesus, did not know she was going to be Jesus' mom. Did you know that? There's nowhere in the Old Testament where the Bible names her. The Bible says, I believe it's Isaiah 9 and 6, Behold, a virgin shall conceive. The Bible never says Mary shall conceive. Okay? No, that's for us. A child is born. Son is given. Okay, I'll have to find another one uh, where it says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive. But um, it never names her. It never names her. That verse is Isaiah 7, 14. That's right. Isaiah 7, 14. The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. But the Bible never names Mary in the Old Testament, if you didn't know that. Find it. You find her name for me and you send me that scripture. Because it's not in there. Mary didn't know she was going to be Jesus's mama until the day that Gabriel, Gabriel came to her and said, Hail Mary, thou art blessed and highly favored. And then Gabriel told Mary what her destiny was going to be. And Mary didn't know. Mary's response was, well, how's that going to happen? Because I don't know a man. Mary was a virgin. She said, I don't have a husband. I'm not sleeping with anybody. And you told me I'm going to have a baby. How's that going to happen? And Gabriel said, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, is going to plant Jesus inside of your womb. And then Mary said, be it unto me. She didn't know until that day. She didn't know she was going to be Jesus' mama until that day. Now, I want you to think about what that means if she had been sexually active before that day. If she hadn't kept her virginity, she would have lost her place in history. And Gabriel would have flown right by her and went and found another girl that was a virgin. Because the Bible said, Isaiah 7, 14, that a virgin will conceive, not Mary. So if Mary had given away her sexual purity 
before that day, she would have missed her destiny of being Jesus' mama, and she probably would have never known. I know, that's going to mess with your head. What I just said is going to mess with your head for a while. Mary may have never known that she missed her chance to be Jesus' mama if she had given away her sexual purity, because Jesus' mama had to be a virgin. So if Mary had become sexually active uh, outside of wedlock or whatever, Gabriel would have flown right by her and went and found another girl in Jerusalem that was still a virgin. That's going to mess with your head for a while because it would have taken only one choice for her to completely miss her destiny. So why do I say that? Because the same thing is true for us. The same thing is true for us right now. When the Lord shows up with a blessing, whatever that blessing is, if you haven't been getting ready, it might fly right by you. And, like we read in the passage today, if the man or the or woman of God proclaims the prophetic word of God, that God is going to do something, and you don't receive it, you make fun of it, you laugh at it, you, you scoff, you say, if God opened windows in heaven, he couldn't make that happen, then you're going to bring judgment down on your own head. And God might let you see the very thing he talked about, but you don't get to participate in it. Do you know what that feels like? That feels like that kid, because this actually happened in my junior high school. feels like that kid, when you're getting ready to graduate, we had this one boy that, that started smarting off to the principal. Like a week before graduation, just was going off on the principal and being disrespectful. Principal sidelined him and didn't allow him to walk with his class. So he was there, but he couldn't walk across the stage. And he was over in the corner. He was crying. His face was all red. He was so upset. I guess he was because he didn't get to walk with his class because he waited a week until a week before graduation and decided to get to smart mouth. Do you understand? So that's what I mean when I say having a smart mouth with God will cost you. It will cost you more than you want to pay. So if the man or the woman of God releases the prophetic word, you better receive that word. Now, the good news is that if you receive it, the blessing is going to be so bountiful, it will blow your mind. Because the lepers and the king of Israel didn't have any idea what had actually happened. That's the, the part about this passage of scripture that just, they didn't know what, it what would have happened if the lepers hadn't gone over there to investigate. Because they were going over there to die. And when they went over there, instead of finding angry Syrians, they found Empty tents, meaning there weren't any people there, but clothes, food, gold and silver where they are just laying around. <clears throat> what the world? You see what I'm saying? You can't explain that any other way but God. But what the Lord tries to teach us with these kinds of experiences and in these types of miracles is that nothing is too hard for God. You need to take the limits off your little human brain and stop trying to squeeze God into your brain saying that if it doesn't make sense to me, it can't happen. That is not the truth. That's not faith. That's not faith. That's intellect. And God never said without intellect, it's impossible to please him. God never said that the just shall live by intellect. That ain't what he said. God said the just shall live by faith. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. And what that means is that you have to believe what the Lord said is true, not figure out how is it going to happen. God is not asking you to figure out how he's going to do something. God is asking you to believe that he can and he will. And that's how you get your blessing. And that's very graphically demonstrated in our, our passage today. So I stopped by to tell you, that you now have a choice to decide which side of that you want to be on. Because some of y'all, I'm releasing a prophetic word to you right now. By this time tomorrow, your whole life going to be different. Some of y'all looking at me right now. In less than 24 hours, your whole life, your whole life is going to turn around. I had a friend of mine tell me that there was a prophetic word that I released to a mutual friend uh, that we both knew. And I told her that she was going to be mentoring some young girls and some young children. And she said in less than a month, it might have been less than a week, she had got some property, she'd opened the business, and a whole bunch of kids signed up. So that prophetic word came to pass in maybe less than 14 days, maybe less than seven days. And I'm saying that to say that God can bring the blessing on you so fast. 
you got to stop trying to, to squeeze God, to filter God through this right here. Okay? And so, that being the case, some of y'all listen to me right now. I'm putting you on 24-hour notice that the blessing of God is upon you. And it's bigger than you think. It's bigger than you can figure out. It's bigger than anything you can do on your own. And by this time tomorrow, it's going to manifest. Now, you go before the Lord and you ask the Lord specifically what that means for you. Because if you're getting a witness in your spirit, then that's talking to you. And ask the Lord specifically, what do you want me to do? I believe you, God. Just tell me how to obey. That's the proper response. And then do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. Okay? Because I know you've got to confess it. I know you've got to say it. But God might tell you to get ready to move. God might tell you, don't take this way to work tomorrow. God might say, instead of going to that grocery store, go to this grocery store. And you might walk into the grocery store and you... <clears throat> Amen. And you might uh, meet somebody that changes your life. You might be in the checkout line trying to buy you a pack of Hershey's chocolate bars and you meet somebody that completely changed. Y'all just strike up a conversation. Okay. So we don't know how the Lord is going to do it. Okay. And there's no need of you spending energy trying to figure God out. God is trying to show us that he is able. So you got to decide which side of that you want to be on. I have already chosen to be on the blessing side. I believe God. I'm taking the limits off my brain. I'm not trying to figure the Lord out. I'm trying to receive what the Lord has to say and position myself so I can get ready, get ready, get ready, get, get ready. Because I already received some prophetic words. And then my pastor released some stuff this morning. And I already had some miracles happen to me in the last two weeks. I wish I could tell you all of them. I already had some miracles happen to me, some stuff that just came out of nowhere that if you had told me two weeks ago, this is about to happen to you, okay? But it happened. And I'm saying that to say, like I tell you every week, I'm not doing anything, uh, I'm not preaching or teaching anything that I'm not doing myself. I'm not prophesying or releasing or, or saying anything to you that's not happening in my life, okay? So that's our prophetic word for this week. I'm super excited about it. I'm excited about what God is going to do. And for some of us, um, 24 hours. For some of us, that's Monday. Okay? For some of us, that's, that's tomorrow. Before 3 o'clock, your life's going to be completely different. Okay? So you need to receive it. You need to believe it. You need to go before the Lord and ask the Lord specifically, how do I position myself? so that I will be where I need to be for this blessing. And then if God takes you somewhere, and you, I mean, you never know. You can't even figure it out. What if somebody wants to give you a car? What if you've needed a car for like two years? And somebody walks up to you tomorrow and says, God put in my heart to get you a car. You'd be like, but it could happen. It's happened for other people. Okay. All right, so if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen, okay, because I'm going to pray now. And also, you hear me say it every week, when I close my eyes and I pray in tongues, I'm going in the Spirit to ask the Holy Ghost if there's any more words He wants me to release financially, any demons that need to be cast out, demonic bondage, healing, and uh, any other general prophetic words, okay? So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen now. Okay, the word that just came to me was uh, Michigan. Hello, Helen, and hello, Erica, I see you. Uh, the word uh, that just came to me was Michigan. So I don't know who that's for. Maybe God's calling somebody to the state of Michigan. If God's calling you to the state of Michigan, that's not the first time you heard that. Now, you know there's no way I can know. If that's talking to you, you know there's no way that I know that. You know that's the Holy Ghost. If God is calling you to speak to me about my job, my son, I feel like I'm for my husband. Okay. All right. We're going to pray for Erica. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless Erica on her job. Oh, God, open doors for her. Uh, uh, put her and place her where you want her to be, oh, God, so she can be a blessing. 
Lord, I pray for Deuce right now, God, that you let your healing power flow on him. I rebuke a spirit of sickness. I rebuke that spirit of infirmity. I rebuke that spirit of fever right now. And I speak health and healing because healing is a children's meat and healing is a children's bread. And I speak health and healing to Deuce right now. And I pray for Ryan on his new job. Oh, God, that you would open doors for him, that you would continue to bless him and let him not just get a blessing, but be a blessing and be a light unto many. Hey, Victoria, God bless you. How are you? How are you? And I thank you for it and I believe you for it right now in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Okay? So again, when I went in spirit, the Holy Ghost gave me the word Michigan. So maybe that's the state of Michigan. Maybe there's a town called Michigan. But whoever that's for, that's not the first time you heard that. Okay? So you need to go before the Lord and, and ask him exactly why that's speaking to you. Okay? Okay, there's somebody listening to me, and your name is Sandy. God is saying to you, Sandy, whatever Sandy is listening to me right now, that you need to obey my voice. That, yes, this is me talking to you through Prophet David Taylor right now. Yes, this is me, Sandy, and you need to hear me and obey my voice. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. But hear me and obey my voice, says the Spirit of the living God. Ooh, okay, 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 I'm going to tell you just what I saw. Let me get my hands up here. You know what I just saw? I saw a pouch like, like a sack, maybe like an old school money bag, and I saw all these coins coming in it. So if that's for me, I received that big time. <laughs> I received a money bag full of coins, but I saw in the spirit <clears throat> that there's a pouch, but there's a pouring, there's coins pouring into it. So if that's for me, I receive it. And wherever that, whoever else that is for, God is talking about pouring coins into your money bags. Just a, just a downpour. Just like something burst over it. Just all kind of coins coming into that money sack. Okay? I just saw that in the Spirit. And, and the Holy Ghost is saying, for those of you that are ready, for those of you that have paid your, those of you that have paid the price of faith, those of you that have believed me, that have fasted, that have prayed, that have confessed my word, that have paid your tithes, paid your offerings, done alms for the poor, God is saying, get ready, because that money bag is for you. That I'm going to just pour those coins, there's going to be a river of coins, and the Lord is saying, you're going to need more than one bag. There's going to be so much, one bag is not going to be able to hold it. So that means when that river of coins starts, starts pouring, believe it, confess it, and when you, run one out of, uh, when you run out of one bag or that bag fills up, go get another bag from somebody else while that flow is going. Because when God has that flow, when God turns a faucet on, you want to catch as much as you can. When, that, when God cranks that faucet all the way up, you want to catch as much as you can. Okay, I just had experience like that a couple weeks ago where a lot, a lot of blessings just started hitting me and I'm like, OK, so I had to skip my day off or I had to like, you know, have half a day off and I had to work the other half a day because I had to keep up with everything that was going on. OK, and once again, I say that because I want to let you know that there's nothing I'm saying to you that I'm not living. Because I know some people have a problem with the prophetic. I know some people think a whole bunch of things. I know sometimes people think it's shady. But I'm always doing what I'm telling you. I'm always living what I'm saying to you. Okay? All right. Oh, I'm going to prove it to you in a minute, too. Just hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, the last thing that, that I'm, okay, last thing I'm hearing here from the Holy Ghost is God is saying full healing and health and prosperity. God is saying wholeness. Okay, <clears throat> you're not supposed to be suffering from chronic anything. Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know if you've been suffering with something, I mean, even something as small as allergies, you're not supposed to be suffering from a chronic anything. Did you know that? Did you know that every day you live and every year you, you live your life, you're supposed to be happy and healthy and whole. You ain't supposed to be dragging around nothing broken with you. That's what the Spirit of God is having me release. Do you know why a lot of Christians don't live that way? Because they don't believe that. They keep confessing sickness. 
They keep confessing brokenness. They keep saying things like, well, you know, when you get to this age, or well, you know, that ran in the family. Well, you know, that happened to daddy and them. Well, you know, uh, they keep saying that. That ain't what the Lord said. What did we just read in the scripture? That's not what the Lord said. The Lord said that health and healing. I did a teaching two weeks ago called, and he healed them all. And the Bible says every time somebody came to Jesus, no matter what the problem, he healed them, and he healed them completely. Because that's what you get when you go to Jesus. It's complete and total healing. That's why you have to say it and you have to believe it. That's why some Christians walk in it and some Christians don't. They keep trying to say that God is playing favorites. That maybe God wants me sick to give him glory. My response to that is, please find me that scripture in the Bible. Please find me anywhere where Jesus met somebody with a mental illness or emotional distress or maimed or blind or couldn't speak, or broken in any way, where Jesus Christ said, for the glory of God, you got to stay sick. Find me that verse and send it to me. Yeah, it's not in there, okay? Because health and healing is what we get from Jesus, if you believe it, okay? So that last word was, was a word of whole prosperity, wholeness. And once again, I've been experiencing that in my life too. Just, you know, just a wholeness in so many different ways. And you don't have to carry stuff for the rest of your life. Even if you had a rough childhood, if you had a rough childhood, you don't have to stay broken for the rest of your life. If you were angry with your parents, you don't have to stay angry for the rest of your life. If you had a bad breakup, a bad divorce, you don't have to stay mad for the rest of your life. You can move into wholeness and healing through the word of God and the power of God's Holy Spirit. That's the benefits of knowing the Lord. And if you don't want that, then that's on you because I'm taking mine. I'm not going through my life looking in the rearview mirror. That ain't no way to live. <laughs> okay? All right. Now, I said I was going to prove it to you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, a week from Tuesday, I'm giving you a little sneak peek. I'm dropping two new books. I'm dropping two new alphabet books uh, entitled My Alphabet is Christmas. One is for Christians and one is secular. And in these books, I'm teaching several things. I'm teaching ABC concepts. I'm teaching in the Christian book, well, also in the secular book, I'm teaching history, the history of a lot of things that we believe and that we celebrate in terms of the Christmas season. And in the Christian book, I also have scripture, okay? So I'm going to do a live launch of that on October 15th. Yes, on October 15th. So not this Tuesday, but a week from this Tuesday. So I said that to the... To, to say, I showed you that, that I'm out here working, doing, living my dream. Because once again, I always want to let you know that I'm not just running my mouth. I know that's why a whole lot of people have a problem with the prophetic. I'm not just out here running my mouth. I'm doing what I'm saying to you. I'm doing my work. I'm living my dream. I'm sowing my seed. I believe in God and I'm moving forward. Okay. All right. Amen and amen. Praise God. Uh, I just bless God. For you guys, I bless God for this time. Uh, uh, I, you hear me say it every week. I count it an honor and a privilege to be used of God because God don't need me. And God don't need me for nothing. Why would he need me? What was he doing before I was born? When God called me, when God calls anybody, he's giving you an opportunity. He's giving you an opportunity to get to know him and his matchless, unconditional love, his unmerited favor, his grace, and his undeserved mercy. You don't have to deserve God's mercy. It's from everlasting to everlasting. You just have to tap into it. He's given you a chance to know him, and he's given you a chance to work in his kingdom so that you don't waste your life. So that's why you hear me say that all the time. If, if you feel God calling you, he's calling you up to a better life than the one you could live on your own. But he's giving you an opportunity, okay? He don't need you. God does not need me. So I'm grateful to be used of God through the prophetic, through the teaching, through my music, through whatever God has given me. I am grateful for an opportunity to know my Father, know my Savior, know the precious Holy Spirit, and, and spend my life working in his kingdom because it gives you blessings in this life and in the world to come, eternal things that will never fade away. And in this life, too, because you can get a name that doesn't fade away, like Abraham's name hasn't faded away. Moses, Sarah, Esther, Ruth, 
King David, King Solomon. That's all because they served the Lord. Apostle Paul, Apostle John, Apostle Peter, because they served the Lord. That's what you get when you serve the Lord. You get rewards that don't fade away. So I'm saying that to say that I'm grateful. So I thank those of you that have tuned in live. Thank you for those of you that were able to like and share. Remember, this prophetic word needs to go around the world because people are going to be blessed and encouraged and edified by it. That's what the prophetic word does. So you can watch the replay right here on Facebook Live and on Periscope. And then in about an hour, I should be able to have it on YouTube because I also have a YouTube channel. So I always put all those links right on the Facebook Live page so you can watch it at your convenience. Okay? So God bless you. Uh, again, I want to thank you for tuning in. And um, is my No More Genies this week? Yes. So my No More Genies for this month is uh, Thursday, October 10th. So I'll be coming on and I'm working on a series in No More Genies uh, where we talk, it's entitled, We Do It Wrong, and I'm going through the parables of the kingdom of heaven so we can see what the Lord actually said about the kingdom of heaven and how we're supposed to access it and how to, to navigate in it. That's going to be on this Thursday, October 10th, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on Facebook Live or Periscope, and then I'll be on next Sunday in my regular time again, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for my live prophetic word. Okay? God bless you. Thank you so much. And remember... Remember, remember, believe the blessing. Amen.